Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. Yesterday was Valentine's Day, so I hope everyone had a wonderful, romantic day and evening with your loved ones around, as well as your friends, your family, for those who care and love. Because it is indeed a very wonderful, incredible, special day. Okay. Meanwhile, I've been very busy with a lot of stuff going around. I mean, yes, I had to clean up the entire house along with my family. Had to reorganize the closet space in my room because I just got some totes to put all my stuff inside to make sure everything will fit perfectly and be safe for sure. And that way we have plenty of room so I can walk around and do whatever. <laughs> and also to make sure everything is clean, nice and spotless. <laughs> yeah, so we had to continue with that. And at that point on, to keep everything reorganized for sure, well, with all the random videos that I'm posting, whenever it's a commercial break, a movie review, or any other, I just hit 2K subs this week. I can't believe it. After all this time. <laughs> so congratulate to me, because at least I'm going pretty strong. But, of course, it's not exactly as huge as you expected though because I know I'm not the biggest popular youtuber around I wish I was but who knows <laughs> but no matter what I will never give up and I'm just gonna keep on posting whatever I can even though it's been difficult for me because I had to deal with a lot of copyright laws they just keep you know blocking my videos by all these fake companies of any kind, such as LDS, Affiliate US, for example, that just won't go away. And then I had to edit out the video and then put it on BitChute so it could be safe. It's, it's a waste of time, and I hate that. But nevertheless, I'm glad my channel is still around and I hope it stays that way because this is indeed my second channel. Okay, my first channel was gone and I don't want this to happen again. Because think of how much work I have put into it. It's, it's ridiculous. Anyway, well, since February is indeed the month of love, because love is in the air <laughs> for sure. I'm going to be reviewing a rather small romantic comedy that came out on February 4th, 2005, and that is The Wedding Date, with Deborah Messing from NBC's Will and Grace, very popular sitcom, Durham Mahoney, you may remember him from My Best Friend's Wedding, Yep, the romantic comedy with Julia Roberts, along with Rupert Grant and Cameron Diaz. Yeah. <laughs> of course, he was also in other films as well, such as The Trigger Effect with Kyle McLaughlin and Elizabeth Shue. Michael Wooker was in that film, too. Yeah, and I think he was also in the movie... Uh, Point of No Return, which happens to be the American remake of La Femme Nikita with Bridget Fonda and Gabriel Byrne. Yeah, I figured he was in that one too. <laughs> yeah. But guess who's also in this movie too? And that is, yes, my favorite actress, Amy Adams from Enchanted and Junebug. Yeah. <laughs> This was before those movies that came out. Yeah. And she's just a sweet, loving, and caring, as well as very beautiful and cute actress ever. 
And the difference here, though, is that um, she was a strawberry blonde. I mean, she looked pretty blonde at this point. But she is indeed a redhead. <laughs> a beautiful redhead. Very stunning and sassy. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I get the idea. Yeah, and, and this slipcover, this is the DVD release that came out in 2005, but this slipcover in the Valentine's Day-esque <laughs> Uh, just came out in 2013 so yeah there's even a quote from the film it says there's no such thing as out of the blue <laughs> yeah and it does have features on the back it says deleted scenes left at the altar yes where you have um just 10 minutes worth of features of, of deleted scenes that were never shown in the movie, which should have been. Plus, you got a date with Deborah, yes, which is just a featurette of her talking about her experience of the film that she did. And it also has her commentary as well. So that's pretty nice. But it should have been more. Like they could have had the trailer in the film. They could have had the TV spots, a, a featurette with the rest of the cast and crew. Yeah, I would have loved to see Amy Adams uh, did an interview for the film too, with Dermot Mahoney as well. Yeah, there could have been a lot of that for this very particular DVD set. Um, the movie is also on Blu-ray as well, and it does have a much better transfer compared to the DVD, so it's an upgrade. I mean, the DVD has a great transfer on its own, but but of course, you know, with all these catalog titles that Universal will put out, they would always have a significant upgrade, but sometimes there are Universal releases where they do the usual remastering by putting DNR and edge enhancements. So that wouldn't be the case for a movie like this. So that's for sure. And surprisingly, um, it was successful when it came out. Um, for its 15 million budget, uh, it made only 47.2 million. So it's definitely worth checking out on that particular February. For sure, I mean, especially when another uh, Valentine's film was coming out, yeah, a romantic comedy called Hitch with uh, Will Smith, <laughs> uh, as well as Kevin James and Eva Mendez. John Mamaze is in that film too, come to mind. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, I mean, this could be worth for a double feature. Now, yes, the movie got a negative reception. Like, people may think of this as just another forgettable fluff. Like, this could be like a sitcom material, that sort of thing. I mean, despite the fact that this release, uh, if you take out the slipcover, you get this uh, poster art, as you can see, this same cover art that they often use. We only have two um, critics right here that says Tremendously Funny by Sean Edwards of Fox TV. And on the back, it says Deborah Messing and Deborah Mahoney are perfect together by Andrea Bocello of NBC TV. And yeah, those are the only two I, I would agree. But the rest, nah. I mean, hey, don't expect this to be like Four Weddings and a Funeral, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, and even My Best Friend's Wedding, as I mentioned, because that was the, the romantic comedy with Julia Roberts, uh, along with um, Rupert Edward and Cameron Diaz come to mind. I mean, yeah, those are better films. But this was also a feel-good film, too, so I don't get it. I mean, yeah, sure, it's going to have some 
seeing that it's PG-13, of course it's going to have some male nudity, rather brief, and there's going to be some partying, you know, some drinking, doing all these crazy, wacky games or something like that. And don't expect that there's going to be some slapstick in the movie, although there isn't much. It's not what you really expected once you see it. But I would definitely say it's it's really worth watching. But the story is, is simple. It's it's about a single girl who unfortunately was trying to get even with her ex. So that's why she hired an, a male escort to be her new boyfriend. And hoping to, to also uh, try to fool her parents, even her sister, since she is about to be invited to her wedding. Yeah, and then soon they'll, they'll probably fall in love and maybe they'll get married too. <laughs> in that sort of way. So, of course, she's going to be the maid of honor for her sister. And hopefully, she'll be able to have a wonderful time, too. Here we go. The movie stars Deborah Bessing, Dermot Mahoney, Amy Adams, Jeremy Sheffield, Sheffield, Jack Davenport, uh, Sarah Parrish, Peter Egon, Holland Taylor from the TV series Bosom Buddies, you know, with Tom Hanks and the late great uh, Peter Scolari. Yeah, and I know he was in the TV series uh, New Hearts. And Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, the TV series. Yeah, that's him. Um, Joan James, George Asprey. C. Gerard Harris, Martin Barrett, J. Simon, Danielle Lewis, Ivana Horvats, and Linda Dorbell. It's based on a novel called Asking for Trouble by Elizabeth Young. Yeah, it's written by Dana Fox and it's directed by Claire Kildner. The movie begins where we meet a single a ravenously attractive and beautiful woman living in New York City at her own apartment named Cat Elias, played by Deborah Messing, who's about to pack up and get ready with her luggage to go straight to London, England on a plane to return back to her parents' home. Her parents, of course, is her stepfather, Victor, played by Peter Egon, along with her mother, Bunny, played by Holland Taylor, chosen to become the maid of honor at her younger half-sister named Amy, who's very sweet, cute, sometimes wild, but rather totally beautiful, with luscious blonde hair. I know it's supposed to be strawberry blonde, but that's what we got. Because <laughs> she is a redhead, of course. Played by Amy Adams. <laughs> by her first name. Only it's Amy Elias. <laughs> At her wedding, as she's ready to be married to her fiancé, who happens to be a very charming, handsome, but also very funny British man named Edward Fletcher Wooten, played by Jack Davenport. There's only one problem. The best man that they hired turns out to be Kat's former ex boyfriend named Jeffrey, played by Jeremy Sheffield, who unexpectedly dumps her two years ago. Feeling very anxious and nervous about confronting and eager to impress him right in front of everyone. That includes her family, friends, and relatives around. She decided to hire a male escort who happens to be tall, handsome, 
suave but very sexy Nick Mercer who's played by Dermot Mahoney to pose as her new boyfriend yes she looked it up at the yellow pages <laughs> and I know if you saw at the beginning I mean basically she was already getting ready but she was so anxious and nervous all the way around that she was about to send the letter to the bike messenger but she had trouble letting go of the letter and also try to receive seven phone messages to Nick and he finally received <laughs> so what a relief and this is exactly what she was chosen to do to make Jeffrey insanely jealous but her entire plan backfires for sure because Suddenly, Nick convinces everyone, including herself, that they are madly in love with each other. And then, Kat felt the same way somehow. And, for what a surprise. <laughs> because, through, throughout those entire uh, days on end, I mean, that's where they really started to fall madly in slowly but surely in love so they basically spend time before the wedding you know they just go around on the bachelor party you know they hang it around at the pub you know doing all these wacky games and stuff you know playing the <laughs> pub golf you know where they all end up you know drinking some some liquor and some act, some wine and all that, so that way they go around doing all these uh, rocky stunts, which at this rate, uh, she ends up going to a local bank where she deposit uh, like over 6,000 pounds. I mean, that was crazy. Um, probably enough so he'll be able to pay him for. And they all go around, you know, driving around, in their limousine and and then they just go around vomiting at several places here and there you know they're just having the best time of their lives um, meanwhile <laughs> uh, Amy's uh, fiance Ed are, are just having a bachelor party so joining in with Nick and all the rest <laughs> so of course you know they're just going around just having fun um, and, and at that point on, um, both um, Kat and Nick were all together. Um, they were also playing cricket, basically baseball, uh, with the rest of the friends and everyone around. Uh, they also went to get some dancing lessons, you know, doing the tango <laughs> and all. Um, and also, they just fell in love um, just having makeup sex, especially <laughs> inside um, her father, her stepfather's uh, boat. <laughs> yeah, and once they got out that morning, <laughs> you know, they just had the, the best time of their lives, you know, just before the wedding will will continue or perhaps they're just going to get ready for their next uh, you know very special uh, day for the the entire family only to discover that suddenly it started to happen the night before the wedding where everything seems to get pretty complicated was when Kat discovers that Amy had slept with Jeffrey even when they were still together all this time and that's the reason why he dumped cats because he believed that he was in love with Amy the whole time and Nick had discovered this a day earlier and when Kat found out about it she felt totally betrayed on all accounts and just puts Nick off so now he's getting ready to return to America and leave Kat the entire cash 
that she had paid him for. So, on the day of the wedding, seeing Kat totally distressed, her stepfather asks her if Nick is the right guy for her, only to realize that he is. So she sets him off to find him somewhere. Meanwhile, just before the wedding ceremony, Amy had confessed her betrayal to her fiancé, Ed, that she was falling in love with Jeffrey, and that's where Ed suddenly goes totally berserk and was ready to chase Jeffrey around. He was going to beat him up for sure. But <laughs> all of a sudden, Nick, who was already leaving, you know, driving around, has suddenly chased uh, Ed around. <laughs> And then that's where they were about to explain about that Jeffrey had said that he gave up on Amy and believes that he's done nothing wrong. But, of course, Ed just calls him a backstabbing weasel. <laughs> but Ed also... Of course, Ed does call him a backstabbing weasel, but Jeffrey believes he's still not in the wrong as he did slip with Amy and before they dated. So, F so anyway, Nick picks up Ed in the car as Jeffrey disappears into the woods. They talk about love, and Ed decided that now he loves Amy even more than he was angry at Jeffrey and to make everything all clear things have gone back to normal and Nick tells Ed that if he went back to the couple they will end up having makeup sex <laughs> in that crazy way so they return back to church and now they're getting ready for exactly the wedding that they've been waiting for so now both Amy and Ed have been married together for love and sickness, <laughs> to death do, do them part, here and there. <laughs> and now, both Nick and Kat have went back together. So soon, Nick is going to get ready to leave the escort business to finally get in touch with Kat. So hopefully, they'll get married. And have a happily ever after, for sure. Same goes with Amy and Ed. Meanwhile, Jeffrey, on the other hand, will will absolutely will learn nothing except having to act like a fool in front of a female neighbor. <laughs> and of course, the movie ends this way. <laughs> So, I mean, I thought this was a, a very um, decent, but also very fun to watch right away for a romantic comedy. And I love the cast. I mean, they did a great job. And I thought, um, even for its crazy moments here and there, which is not too intimidating, I mean, it was sweet. And it was as charming as it could be. I mean, this is exactly what they were going for. I mean, yes, it does feel like sitcom material. I mean, considering that Deborah Messing is on the TV show, or was on the TV show, um, Will and Grace. And I know they had made a comeback um, later in 2017 before the show ended uh, sometime a few years later. But nevertheless, I mean, Deborah Messing has always been so beautiful. And, yeah, she's sexy too. But she's just a very incredible actress for sure. Especially when she's playing different roles. And Deborah Mahoney is just as excellent as ever. And no matter what he plays, I mean, he's always uh, very charming and, and sexy. Of course, can't go wrong with Amy Adams, though, because she's always been as beautiful, wonderful. 
She can also be very spunky, funny, and sexy too. <laughs> I just always love her, you know, and she's the main reason to see this movie too, besides Deborah Messing and Dermot Mahoney. And all the other actors are great too, um, especially uh, Holland Taylor. Um, because there were some moments, which I know they had it on the deleted scenes, where she really does care for both her, her daughters. You know, we also learned that there was a moment where, you know, Kat really did help um, Amy out after she once had a boyfriend named Tony. And then, because she comes... She's the one who actually helps Amy out if something goes wrong. That, you know, if Tony hurts her, Kat is going to do the best to, to stop him. And then now they can be together again, hoping to find, you know, true love for sure. And hopefully Kat will do the same too. So that was a very... Um, very dramatic but very smart um, scene that they should have included on in the movie if it wasn't cut down very short because the movie is only cut down to, to about 89 minutes almost 90 minutes so I mean there are certain scenes that should have been included um, here and there but nevertheless um, it's indeed um, a decent film to watch. It's, it's a lot better than what the critics gave. Because they always expect everything more. But it's not exactly what we had. Um, also the fact that they had some scenes being shot uh, outdoors in, in several parts of the, uh, of the UK. You know, such as Shirley, Cher, Gamine, and Guilford come to mind. And even the partial amend uh, hill fields, um, partially amend hill fields. Though I mean, they had some really beautiful locations, uh, very uh, luscious right away. I mean, especially the moments too when when Nick and Amy were all alone, even though Jeffrey was there with her, and try to explain about what happened. I mean, you can definitely see how beautiful the place looks here and there. Also had some great soundtrack right there. I mean, aside from the song Breathless by The Chorus, which I know you hear that song, you know, during the early 2000s. I mean, you may have heard that in the TV spot of the movie um, Chalk a Lot. And you may have heard that in several films. That's a great song. I love that. There were three songs by Michael Babel, so you know that guy, he sings a lot of great songs, he had songs like Sway, Home, and the cover version, Save the Last Dance for Me, which that song had been played on the radio a lot, and I think that was a hit too, which has a tangle beat to it, and <laughs> indeed this was the cover version from the drifters and it goes like this but don't forget who's taking you home and who in arms you're gonna be so darling save the last dance for me so that was perfect and it also has the, the classic song one fine day by the chiffins air supplies all out of love that song well, which is funny because there was even a moment when they did show a poster of Air Supply <laughs> that was in the, the cabinet. Yeah. Um, yeah, there, and also the song Boogie Shoes by Casey and the Sunshine Band. Yeah, the 70s band disco. <laughs> okay. And yes, there is some brief nudity scenes. I mean, mostly from Nick when he was uh, taking his uh, clothes off and his underwear. 
So you see his uh, his butt talks, and then he was almost ready to show his dick, his schlong, right in front of her. <laughs> that one scene while he she was uh, reading the, the magazine article, <laughs> and that was just that was very awkward. <laughs> There was also a moment, too, when Nick and Kat were driving around on the streets of London and they just had to make a stop. And Nick calms Kat down because she was very anxious and nervous about this whole thing. And this is where <laughs> he basically tells her to close her eyes and begin to think some very you know, thoughtful, meaningful thoughts. Yeah. And that way she'll be calm and clear. And yeah, he even she even mentions uh, Yoda. <laughs> yeah, a Star Wars reference in there. <laughs> I mean, just when you think she he was almost going to kiss her. <laughs> So yes, there was some sexual content too, especially when they made love in the boat. So, and of course they change here and there. <laughs> so, it's very romantic right away. Uh, I do wish there were more scenes. Uh, I mean, there are some scenes here and there with Amy, but I wish there were plenty of scenes. If the film wasn't cut down too short. You know, like if they had made it a little longer, I think, I mean, it wouldn't be tedious. It's just that maybe there should have been some more scenes uh, between Kat and Amy. And sadly, that was in some of the deleted scenes on there, too. So, so I, I know it's, it's not perfect, but it's still worth the watch. And especially if you watch this on Valentine's Day. And also, this movie was produced by uh, Jessica Bentinger because uh, she's, of course, a screenwriter and novel novelist, too. In fact, she wrote um, Bring It On. <laughs> yes, she, she wrote that, uh, as well as uh, Stick It. Yeah. So it's really nice that she actually got to produce this. Um, because, of course, you know, she did also work on the series uh, Sex and the City in 2001, even though that show came out in 1998 on HBO, <laughs> and also did the movie Aquamarine that she wrote. Yeah. So here we go. <laughs> so that's The Wedding Date, and I give the movie... Three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.